the first step that we have here is just a, a diagram that really talks about all the cell adhesion molecules that we had previously did in the, uh, the last video. Uh, we have weak selectin mediated. Notice that it's weak. Selectin mediated adhesion allows neutrophils to kind of roll along the endothelium. So first thing we have is vasodilation and uh, increased vascular permeability. The vasodilation not only is kind of a uh, byproduct, but you think it's kind of weird that we have both vasodilation happening and fluid leaving the blood. The main reason that we're doing this is because if we vasodilate, we have decreased blood pressure, and if we have de decreased blood pressure, we have a slowing of all the blood inside of it. And in this context, we're slowing the movement of neutrophils, not just because of that, but because of the selectin molecules here, which are binding to a specific glycoprotein on the neutrophils, which is kind of slowing them down. But just notice that it's a very weak interaction at this point. So um, this diagram here, I'm going to go ahead and just put up here at the top, is the entire long process known as excavation. It consists of rolling adhesion, tight binding, diapodesis, and migration. So this whole process is, is graded and controlled by the use of cytokines. So here we have just another example of the selectin uh, protein here binding to the specific glycoproteins that we have for, uh, in this context, on a neutrophil, but I, I imagine it's a universal type of a mechanism as well. Um, here we see the CXCL8 receptor, and this that's what this is right here, in case you can't uh, tell what that is. This is the CLXCL8 cytokine, which is going to initiate binding here. Uh, this right here would also be uh, the integrin LFA1, which we just talked about, binding here to ICAM. So this is the tight binding, okay? So rolling adhesion is just the selectins. Um, tight binding is where we have not just the selectins here, but CXCL8 and LFA and ICAM coming together, forming this nice little bondage here. This is going to undergo a series of conformational changes as well, that's going to cause diapodesis, which is uh, means oozing action, because it's like it's oozing through the CD31 part of the tight junctions there. Um, and then we have migration. So once it goes through the actual endothelium and starts to migrate towards the tissue space, this is probably in the interstitial space, or depending, it's, it kind of varies with <laughs> location. But notice that it's being guided here to the site of infection by CXCL8 chemokines. So that should hopefully all be somewhat of a review. So the only reason for this diagram being put here, which I feel like is almost somewhat premature, that I think is unique worth mentioning here, is that it's GTP uh, and then the G protein, which that may or may not look familiar to you, depending on what a, how much education you've had. But this is all part of a signal transduction pathway. And we'll talk about that and then the map part, which is this decrease in blood pressure is going to be caused by um, anaphylotoxins or histamines and all the other stuff depending on this is a kind of almost like a cyclic which came first the chicken or the egg type of a thing but anyways this decrease in blood pressure I'm just gonna go ahead and say this by vasodilation two processes we have there from anaphylotoxins this causes the neutrophils to slow down okay so the neutrophils are gonna slow down but the other thing that also contributes to the neutrophils slowing down is that as, as they're going through here, they're always having the rolling action, which the rolling action would be the selectin binding to the glycoproteins on the neutrophil. I'm going to switch colors just to really drive home that's what we're talking about here. I would assume it would, would work for other types of structures as well. Anything that's a sugar, it'll work with selectin there. And so that's what rolling action is. Um, the next thing that we have here on our on our steps that we have to talk about here, this also kind of slows down the neutrophils as well, both of those interactions together. And then we have tissue necrosis factor, factor type alpha. And I don't know if you remember that, but I said the tissue necrosis factor type alpha increases the gene expression of ICAM1 in the endothelial cells and it increases the gene expression of ICAM2 in the endothelial cells. Saying on the endothelia, in case you can't read that. Um, so ICAM, as you know, it's going to interact with the integrins. So I'm just going to go ahead and just draw it like this is the ICAMs here. 
I know I'm not being very specific here. And it's going to interact with, I'll do it in gold. Uh, you know what, I'm going to do it in blue. That sounds like a good color to use for this. The integrins CR3, 4, and uh, really more so CL, uh, CR3 than 4, but LAF1. So these are the integrins. These are the integrins that are located on another thing that we have on the neutrophils. Just drawing this long series of, of binding going on here is, um, I'm going to just go ahead and CX, CR1 and 2. I'm just going to go ahead and draw them as CXCR. And then what this means is it's the interleukin-8 binding protein, or you could think of it as CXCL8 protein, uh, binding protein, whatever floats your boat. Anyways, and so attaching to these are, if I can fit this, CXCL. Now, CXCL8, when we have this interaction here between the CXCL8 and then the CXCL8 receptors 1 and 2, this is going to make the initial bonding between ICAM and the integrins, those bonds are going to get stronger through a series of conformational changes. Um, the other thing that I guess I would mention here, and I'll do it in blue to, to really reiterate, that this is the uh, chemokine receptors. CXCLR1 and 2 are both chemokine receptors. And the significance of this is that this results in the GTP slash G protein signal transduction pathway. And the consequences of this, of the signal transduction pathway here from the binding of CXCL8 is, uh, well, actually two things. The first thing that it's going to do is it's going to have more activity. They're going to start to really uh, increase expression of cells that are involved, or increase expression of mechanisms that are involved in phagocytosis. And then the other thing that we're going to do is the neutrophil itself is actually going to have an increase production of CXCL8, which is, um, it's a chemokine. So yeah, it's like it's, it's going off to, to fight, but it's also leaving a trail of breadcrumbs along the way so that the new, other neutrophils can know where to go. Um, <clears throat> sorry, the next step that we have is the actual, the last step of, of it, which I'm just going to go ahead and just classify it as the actual process of excavation. These are all things that kind of play a role in that, but this is where it's actually physically leaving and going in there. So the neutrophil here, let's see if I can... And this is why if you ever have like a really bad inflammatory disease, like say rheumatoid arthritis, that is damaging the tissue. That tears it up badly and you have scars left over from that or any type of like stays like inflammatory disease that kind of runs haywire. And so what this neutrophil is going to do is it's going to, as it's leaving from the tissue, from the blood into the tissue, it's going to destroy the basement membrane. The basement membrane is made up of two main proteins. Uh, laminin and collagen. So how are these two proteins destroyed? Um, really by the use of degradatory enzymes. Um, I'm going to say it destroys via enzymes. So neutrophils, the process of them going from the bloodstream to the tissue site is damaging in its own right and that's something that I think is really interesting um, just to, to consider this is why we have so much scarring and why inflammatory diseases hurt so bad is because we're literally tearing apart part of our own body just to make it a pathway for the neutrophils to get where they need to go.